Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode on how to build a WordPress plugin from scratch. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look on how to automatically generate a code, a PHP code to export all the custom post types that we generated. So the export section of this custom post type manager that we're coding, it's kind of useless because WordPress has built in the functionality of the future to export all the data that we have in our installation, in our theme, in our database. If we go inside tools and we click on export, we will be able to select uh, posts, pages, or it's going to list automatically all the custom post types that we generated. So the user already has the ability to export that data. So why did we create this export section? Well, I want to give the users the ability to export the PHP code to generate a custom post type, like a standalone custom post type, without relying on my own plugin. An example of this it could be if you go to the generatewp.com website and you access the custom post type section you see a full list of like PHP code like a standalone standard PHP code without anything customized that it looks pretty decent if you click it's gonna select them all you can copy paste this code in your functions.php or in whatever other PHP file that you have in your theme and automatically this custom post type will be activated. I want to offer the user exactly the same. So when they access the export section, I'm going to have a list of all the custom post types that I generated. And underneath that, I want these exact same snippet of code that can copy paste in their own functions.php. If they decide they don't need my plugin anymore, but they want to maintain their custom post types. So let's do it. The generated WP website uses a code predefy JavaScript plugin in order to have this type of syntax highlight and recognize a sort of like coding language and give these nice colors. It's more readable and it's easier to understand for whatever user is looking at this. So if you search code predefy on Google, the first thing that you will find is the GitHub repository where you have all the full explanation of how it works and how you can attach it to your website. If we scroll down in the setup, it's suggested to use a CDN to include the, the predefy.js and then the only thing that we need to do is just wrap whatever code we want to write in regular text around the pre HTML markup with a pretty print type of class attached to it. Well, this is pretty straightforward, but the thing is that I don't really want to use a CDN. This is not a real life example. So I will never put a CDN just for one single JavaScript file. I want to have everything tied in my own plugin. So let's use NPM, the node package manager. If you have no idea what is the node package manager, I strongly suggest you to pause this video and check the Gulp series from scratch, where I explain what a package.json file is, how to generate rate one and what an NPM, what is NPM and how we can use it to speed up our development process. But in my case, I decided to use the code predefy version that is on NPM and I'm gonna hook it up dynamically to my JavaScript file and uh, compile everything with Gulp. So let's do it. Let's copy this instruction that it's really straightforward. So NPM install code dash predefy. Let's access our terminal. And inside our terminal, let's paste npm install code prefi in the base directory of our plugin. And of course, before pressing enter, let's remember to put dash dash save to say to npm a hey, save this repository, this package inside my package.json because I need it. Let's hit enter. And after a couple of seconds, the package will be installed. And if we access our code editor in the package.json and we scroll down where we have the list of dependencies here, right at the bottom, we're going to have the code prettyfy. And this is the first and only dependency in this project that is not a dev dependency because all these dependencies are necessary to activate goal, but are not necessary in order to run the plugin normally. On the contrary of the dependencies, we need the code prefi in order to have that page properly working. So now we have the code prefi in our package.json, but of course, if we try to use it, it will not work because we don't have anything. We is not connected to our PHP script. So let me give you an example. If we access the templates and the cpt.php, we scroll all the way down to the tab tree where we have our export stuff. If we just follow the examples that it's in the website, so. For example, we copy this stuff, the pre 
with the pretty print class and we paste that inside our tab tree. We indent a little bit just to be more organized. But if we save it and we go back in our administration area on the export, we refresh, custom post type, export. You see, yes, we have the code, but it's not styled as it is in this example here. So we don't have that package that we just installed in our node modules attached to our JavaScript file. And that's because we didn't import that file. We installed it in our node modules, but we didn't import it in our source file, in our assets. If we access myscript.js, this is the minified version of our script, but there's no way, there's no trace of that code prefi plugin. In order to use it in our script, we can import it dynamically with ES6. So if we open our source folder, JS, myscript.js, right before all this code that we created to manage the tabs, right here before the declaration of the window at event listener load, we can simply say, hey, import, open single quotes, and then the name of the package that is specified in our package.json. So in our case, is code prefi. And my autocomplete is suggesting that exact file that I just updated. So code prefi, awesome. Now, if we check the instructions in the code prefi getting started guide, it says that if we want automatically by importing the run prefi.js, we'll auto load all the stuff with we'll auto load JavaScript and the CSS. If we want to do it by ourselves, so saving our own JS and CSS, what it suggests to do is importing the prefi.js that we're currently doing with the import and then running the PR pretty print on load body. So that's what we have to do. Let's copy this pr.pretty print. Copy this. Let's go back in our script. And right after the body is loaded, because we're listening for this event before running our JavaScript, we can paste this code pr.pretty print and then semicolon at the end. Save it. Now we can open our terminal and we can run gulp we could potentially run just JS or simply gold if you don't want to specify any other option. But because I know I have to update this thing a couple of time, I'm going to run uh, the watch command. So it's going to gulp is going to be up and running and keep watching my files and auto compile everything every time I save something. So now the JavaScript is compiled. If I go back in my administration area and I refresh, if I access the export, yes, it doesn't look great. It still looks really awful. But if we inspect the element, look what we have here. What is this? So instead of having just the pretty print class, we have the pretty printed with some uh, missing style. And then every single word is wrapped around a span HTML markup. That means that the code prefi JavaScript library is actually working and it's visible here because it's wrapping all these text in preparation of whatever style we're gonna apply. Now it's time to import the CSS. So if we access back our code editor, we go inside our SCSS mystyle.scss. Here I'm importing a bunch of modules that are part of my library, that are part of my structure inside the module folder. If I want to import a CSS inside the node modules, this is kind of hard. Like it doesn't exist a shortcut or something like that. First, we need to identify the location of the CSS file that we want to import. So let's open the node modules folder. Let's crawl all the way to the code dash prettyfy. Then we have our styles and here we have our default like sunburst, sons of obsidian, doxy and desert.css. Let's say I want to import the sunburst dot CSS, what I can do, I can before the execution or the importing of all my custom modules, I can import also. And here we have to point to the location of these sunburst.css and the location of the sunburst, we should access it by tapping the base directory of our plugin and then accessing the node modules. To do that, we have to go back a couple of times. So let's specify the base directory of one folder back and then we can access the node underscore modules and then forward slash the code pretty phi folder then the styles and then sun burst dot CSS. Save it, Let's check in our terminal, Gulp just ran and updated two CSS files. So if we go back in our administration area and we refresh, we go inside the export. There we go. Now we have our pretty aggressive sunburst type of style. Let me zoom in and you can see it, but we can change it. So let's grab 
something else actually instead of sunburst let's grab desert and see how desert is save automatically gulp will compile everything so if we access here we refresh go export oh this is kind of nice yes desert it's way better it's way more readable so now that we imported our code prettify package and we import the css style and the javascript file by using simply import now we can generate all the php code that we want to generate here and as you notice here we have a weird indentation because it's recognizing actually all the tabs so we should replace this in order to avoid all these issues or if we want to keep it we have to unfortunately start from the initial column all the way attached to the left of our code editor so if we refresh now if we export now the indentation looks okay so let's compile this file if we access back the generate wp.com you see that we have the full list of description of pretty much all the parameters that we need in order to generate a custom post type or even extra parameters we don't need all of this but the things that is most interesting is the register post type and the add action so let's copy this code let's paste it in our section here our pretty print let's paste it here and probably should maintain all the indentation so if we refresh this page and we export yes we have this full uh, code that it's it's okay it's readable it's good as a decent styling but of course you can change the style the thing that I want to do now I want to loop all the custom post type that I created and automatically inject the actual values that we have here and set up the post type in order to be registered properly with all the things that the user defined so if you remember we actually have something like that right if we access our ink and in the base and our custom post type controller we have something similar where we are registering the custom post type in the register custom post types we're looping through the register post type and we're injecting directly the array but that's what we have to do basically for each custom post type that we have as a post type we need to print all the information that we saved in our database so let's do it in the cpt section in the cpt template we already have something like that because we're looping through all the options and we don't need to get the options once again because this variable it's in the same file so we can access it and it's not a problem so let's copy this for each and let's paste it right here so let's open and close the php tag for each options as option and let's close the for each right after pray here a simple curly brackets and right here we can print for example an h3 tag and we can echo the option singular name then let's fill up a bunch of these sections here let's do exactly the same that we have here so the post type singular name we can replace instead of post type we can replace this php code then menu name can be the plural name let's duplicate also and let's have it in the plural name here in this section that's perfect let's keep copying this we don't need to update all this stuff i mean you can do it but i'm not gonna do it because it's just annoying and that would be such an annoying tutorial to follow but you can update all this stuff the only thing that i want to do i want to check in the same way that i'm doing here in the original for each if it's set the public is it true otherwise it's false let's copy all this stuff let's go back down here and let's echo if it's set this is true and let's be sure to have all lowercase otherwise we're gonna have an issue and let's copy these as well and let's paste it in the has archive because we have that key as well has archive now the last thing that we have to do let's copy once again this echo here and we need to replace these register post post type with the actual name of our post type that we actually have of course because this is what we actually need so let's save it let's go back in our administration area let's refresh if we go inside the export first we have the comic book and register custom post type we could change that as well custom post type we have the name post types singular name comic book 
the plural name and the menu name is comic books. Then we have the public is true, has archive is false because we set to false. But register post type is, there you go, the comic book, the unique custom post type that we specified when we registered that post type. And we have another loop with the product where it has the same exact options, but of course it changes. We have product, products, blah, blah, and then uh, public set to false and has archive set to true and the register post type set to product. Beautiful, right? So this was just a quick example to show you how to install an NPM package and how to dynamically use it inside our JavaScript or CSS file. Of course, this is kind of silly to leave it like that, but it's also kind of silly to record alpha tutorial of me like filling up all these text that it's kind of useless. But now you have this option if you want to give the users the ability to export the custom post type with a pre-made PHP code, you can just fill up all these sections with the information that we want and we need. Well, I think it's pretty much it for the custom post type manager section. I know we didn't fully cover the custom post type options. We just took care of five attributes and we didn't do everything that we could do. For example, when we edit a post type, we should avoid for the user to change the custom post type ID. We should give the option to select which taxonomies we should attach to a specific custom post type, having the option of a custom icon and stuff like that. But all these things are pretty much repeated code of the stuff that we already coded. So I don't really want to spend hours and hours in tutorials in just showing you a bunch of copy paste and recoding the same section, recoding the same things. This is a good overview of how to create a repeater or like a custom post type manager to generate, edit, delete and export as many custom post types you want. Now, of course, you can extend this section to make it look as you want. Expand all the attributes in order to give the user full flexibility on how to customize and generate a custom post type. And of course, fill up all the information that we need in our export section. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can check the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again guys and until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding!